We all want to feel that deep connection with the Quran, but let's be honest, for a lot of us, the Quran sits on the shelf more than it does in our hands. This Ramadan, let's change that. Imagine this, you understand every word you recite, the verses come alive with meaning, and your heart feels a closeness to Allah you've never experienced before. This episode will be your guide to unlocking the Quran and making it a daily source of inspiration and spirituality this Ramadan and beyond. Assalamu alaikum, this is your host Nusheen and welcome to Jirnji Jannah, a podcast curated to help you become your own dream girl. On the third episode of the Ramadan series, we are going to talk about how to connect or reconnect with the Quran. Ramadan is essentially the month of the Quran, so logically we should be using this month as best as we can to get closer to it. Let me ask a question. How many of us have read the Quran front to back in our native language? How many of us have gone through and studied each surah meticulously and watched the seers on them to truly understand the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The answer is not enough of us. So many of us want to build a relationship with the Quran and we decide to do that by reading it in Arabic. And alhamdulillah, that's a beautiful thing to do. But to truly build a connection, I believe that you also need to actually understand it. And to understand it, we need to actually know what is being said, how Allah means each verse. That is just as important as reciting it in Arabic. And the difference it makes is genuinely mind-blowing because, again, you actually are understanding what Allah is trying to convey to us. I'm going to share a hadith that I think really exemplifies how important the Quran is to us. Or The actual hadith is a lot longer, um, but I'm just going to pull out this specific sentence from it because that's what I want to share. Um, the Prophet wasallam said, And I am leaving among you two weighty things. The one being the book of Allah, i.e. the Quran, in which there is right guidance and light. So hold fast to the book of Allah and adhere to it. So this book, the Quran, it's our connection to Allah. I think it's so easy to forget that the words we read in the Quran are the words of our Lord. They're the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No other book has that. No other book is going to be more important than this. And at this point, you might be saying, yes, I know the importance. I'm here to ask how exactly do I connect? So I will be sharing five tips um, that inshallah will help you. Tip number one is to listen and read to the Quran regularly. I know this may sound like a very, very basic piece of advice, but Honestly, a lot of the time, it's the simple things that help the most. How many of us are guilty of at one point or another in our lives letting the Quran lay on a bookshelf for months and then when we finally go and get it to read it, we find that there's dust on it from how unused it is. You're not going to build a connection with the Quran if you're not actively engaging with it every single day. So make Quran something that is a part of your daily life. And this means something different for everyone what i recommend is picking a time and making it an unconscious habit to read quran at that time every single day this can be after one of the five daily prayers right before you go to sleep whenever fits best what i like to do is recite after maghrib i know i've talked about this on previous episodes but um basically my mother may allah bless her soul uh growing up she sort of instilled that habit into me and my sisters so after maghrib we would all sit down on our paramats and recite quran and as i've gotten older at times i found myself um finding it really hard to keep up with this you know life can get busy but i always find myself going back to it because this habit that has been instilled into me it's just it makes it so much easier to go back and restart it even when i've lost it routines are always so so important to implement into your life and this also applies when it comes to deen so if you make your ibadat and your worship into routines and habits it just makes it that much easier even when at times you may fall off having that system just makes it extremely easy to put yourself back on track and i also said listen to the quran um which is the second part of this tip it's not just reading yourself listening to other people recite the quran is such a beautiful experience like once you find your favorite quran reciters The difference you feel when you listen to the Quran is just, wow. Like, there have been times when I've found a reciter and them reciting a surah has literally brought tears to my eyes because of the emotion that they're able to convey. And also on top of that, not everyone knows how to read Arabic. 
um, some of you guys may be very recent uh, reverts or you were born into Islam but only recently are trying to connect with the Quran and it can be very hard. So in all these instances, just having those reciters there really helps. And this is something that you can really easily implement into your life. Like you're cleaning, play a Quran recitation in the background. You're driving somewhere, play a Quran recitation. You're getting ready in the morning, play a Quran recitation. It's just like, again, a really easy thing to implement into your life. And it brings a lot of peace as well. Tip number two, read the Quran in your native language and watch tafsirs. We recite Surah Al-Fatiha in every single rakat that we pray. But how many of us know what this surah actually means? Like, what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala trying to tell us through it? And most of us would be like, I don't actually know because... I haven't done that amount of research into the Qur'an to try and grasp onto that. You can't truly connect with the Qur'an if you don't know what Allah is trying to convey to us through it. A really great way to do this and to truly understand the meaning of the Qur'an is to watch tafsirs. If you don't know what a tafsir is, it's basically an explanation of the Qur'an. So scholars will sit down and go through each verse of a surah explaining everything. And on top of that, oftentimes, they'll break down the verses into the specific words that are being said. Because Arabic is such an intricate language, one word can literally have 30 different meanings. So going through it like piece by piece and putting it all together so that you can truly understand inside and out what the surah is saying. And I remember the first time I watched a tafsir video, I was actually, it was on uh, Surah Al-Fatiha because I saw a video and someone said the same exact thing. Like how many of us know what Surah Al-Fatiha actually means when we recite it so many times? And I was like, okay, so I'm going to give this a try. I remember how genuinely surprised I was by how in-depth of an analysis the scholar was giving. He was going into how each word had all these different meanings. Like, this surah is seven verses, 25 words, and the video was almost an hour long. That's how in-depth he was going. And honestly, that experience really changed how I viewed the Qur'an. Like, my perception of the Qur'an really changed and how i interacted with it as well i was able to see the quran not just as a collection of verses not just as a book but as something deeper that is really intricate and i feel like after this point i was able to fully appreciate the quran for what it is and that's because i saw the true beauty in it and it's so easy for the quran to just like become something that we recite during our prayers but going into the actual meaning helps with creating a deeper bond with it and with allah because you know the meaning of the amount of the amount of wisdom and the amount of guidance that each verse holds. It's something that has really helped me, again, in shaping my perception of the Qur'an and in Islam in general. And it's elevated me on my spiritual journey. A great thing to do to keep track of all the tafsirs that you watch is to keep a Qur'an journal where you basically just take notes on the tafsirs for each surah, writing down all um, the things that you learn just makes it easier to actually sit in the brain um and what i like to do is write the verse out fully in arabic and then write it in english and then notes on how the scholar is explaining everything so that um i just have like a brief nice summary overview if i want to ever go back and just relook at my notes next we're going on to tip number three which is start acting upon what allah says in the quran implementation of the quran is just as important as engaging with it. You can recite the Quran, listen to it, learn its meaning, but if you're not then taking what you've learned and then applying it to your life, then you're not fully connecting it. Essentially, the Quran is a guide to us as Muslims on how to live our lives. Does it make sense to read the guide and take the time to understand what the guide is saying and then not follow what the guide is telling you to do? No, it doesn't. We're supposed to take what we've learned and connect it to our daily lives. The Quran says to, uh, for example, be patient. You can read the verse in Arabic and in English and watch the tafsir. But with that deep knowledge that we now have, we are sort of kind of obligated to act upon that knowledge. One thing that I did to help with this is I bought a book called The Practicing Muslim, which summarizes the code of conduct that is prescribed in the Quran and it breaks it down by each surah. So you can go through by each surah and see what Allah prescribed in each surah. So for example, under Surah Furqan, it says, remain steadfast, don't be arrogant, exercise self-restraint, be humble, and it goes on with more points from the surah. This has really helped me because it 
really easily translates the Quran's message into do's and don'ts that I can take and directly implement into my life. I hope you guys see that connection between the three steps that I've given so far because they do interconnect. They all build off of one another and they're all very important parts of the journey of connecting with the Quran. Um, let me give another example. So in uh, Surah 49 verse 12, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us not to backbite. And backbiting is basically talking bad about somebody else. If you read this verse, you understand it, alhamdulillah. But then you go ahead and talk bad about someone else while you're hanging out with a friend. That's not, first of all, it's just not a nice thing to do. It's immoral. And secondly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has explicitly told you not to do it. Knowing this, having that knowledge, and then going ahead and doing it anyway, it doesn't make sense to do it. It honestly makes it worse. So... You can see how important it is to not only understand the Qur'an intellectually, but to also internalize its teachings and to allow it to shape your behavior. The reflection of how strong your connection is with the Qur'an lies in how you act upon it. It lies in your actions, your personality, your character. Next, on to tip number four, which is make it interactive. Our brains tend to remember things better when they're interactive because we are actively engaging in whatever it is that we're learning. One really easy way to do this, and I already mentioned this briefly earlier, but keep a Quran journal. While you're reading the Quran, jot down verses that jump out to you. Maybe a particular phrase that resonates with you um, or with something that you're going through right now or a question that comes to your head. Write it all down. Don't worry about being um, neat. Um, it's honestly just for you. This is your personal space to explore your own thoughts and your own feelings. In addition to writing um, down the verses, you can also take the time to reflect on what it actually means to you. What lessons can you learn from this? How can you apply um, the teachings to your daily life? Maybe you um, even want to write down a dua based on the verse, asking Allah for the strength to live by its message. Another great thing you can do is build a mind map. Let's say you're reflecting on the theme of patience in the Qur'an. You can create a mind map with the word patience in the center. And then as you brainstorm verses or stories relating to patience, you can branch them out from the center. So for example, you might add a branch for surahs about dealing with difficult people, controlling your anger, or entrusting uh, in Allah's plan. You can also then sub-branch to add specific verses. And after reflecting, you can also add personal stories. Like think about your own life. Brainstorm situations where being patient was a challenge for you. Maybe you had a long commute to work or to school one day and that sort of kind of tested your nerves or you had a disagreement with somebody. Write down these experiences and then see how the Quran's teachings on patience could have helped you in those moments. Through this method, you can really visualize um, and see the connections between different ideas and how they all relate back to the central theme and they allow you to connect the topics within the Qur'an and see the bigger picture. This also relates back to my third tip of acting upon the Qur'an um, because you're also able to see exactly where in your life you can apply specific verses of the Qur'an. Another interactive um, study method is to create or to join a study group um, either in real life or online. You can learn together and you can learn from each other. Uh, discussion is also very important in the process of learning. So you can discuss with each other what you've learned. And all this just helps keep what you've learned in your brain for a longer amount of time. This can also count as a great way to hold yourself accountable to actually connect with the Quran every single day. Because let's face it, studying and staying consistent can be tough it's really easy to become demotivated but when you've got a study group you're not going at it alone which makes it a lot easier to stay on top of your goal and this goes both ways you can be the one giving your friends that extra boost that they need to stay motivated too tip number five also the final tip um is reflect this is the most impactful thing that you can do to get closer to the quran think about it like this Reflection is the bridge that takes you from simply reading the words on a page to truly feeling them in your heart. I'm going to go back to the example that I was using before about patience. It's one thing to understand the meaning of the words, but it's something else entirely to consider how this verse applies to a recent fight you have had with a friend. Or maybe the verse reminds you of the importance of forgiveness or the need to control your anger. 
reflection allows you to make these connections to take the wisdom of the quran and to use it as a mirror to examine your own actions and the motivations that you have it's about asking yourself the tough questions like am i living up to the teachings of the quran and how can i better myself as a person how can i better myself as a muslim this process of self-reflection isn't easy it forces you to face your flaws but it's ultimately what allows the quran's message to take root and grow within you and change you for the better the quran has so many beautiful powerful verses and it's up to you to figure out what they mean for you in terms of applying them into your life on how you think and on how you act there have been moments where i'm reading a verse and i have to stop because i'm thinking wow reading this is really making me regret something i did or saying in this situation i should have thought about it in this way for you maybe it could be a verse about generosity and you have that nagging feeling that you could be doing more right now to help those in need but here's the thing once you see those flaws once you recognize them you can't just unsee them right that's the beauty of self-reflection it forces you to confront your shortcomings but it also gives you the power to do something about them and to do that through the quran by using it as your guidance is the best way let's go back to the patience example before we end this episode so let's say you're reading the quran and you come across a verse about patience and you reflect on that verse and you're able to realize that that's something you need to work on so you may choose to recoup your thoughts before you um respond to something that annoys you these are the kinds of positive habits that can result from reflection and over time as you keep reflecting and making changes you'll start to notice a difference in yourself you'll be more patient more generous more kind because you took that extra time to look inward and confront your own flaws from the perspective of the quran that brings us to the end of this episode i hope your first day of fasting went amazing and that the start of this ramadan has been good for you make sure to follow my instagram for daily motivation and to just see my life i'll have the link to that in the description ramadan kareem and i'll see you guys in my next episode assalamu alaikum